So hello guys, uh, this is yet another video, so uh, we want to look at something uh, like this. So we want to look at this table, we want to make our table look something like this, when it's, this is set to false or true or whatever that's going to be set. So that's generally what we want to do. So if we come to, to this table we are working with, you notice we have all these details here. And we have true or false. Now. How do you go about this? You go about this by going to the list page of the page you want to make uh, work and you want to do it a custom view. Then you'll go, to go ahead and look for the table row. So this is what we are going to be working with. So if you come here in another class, so you always change this using a class, you can say BG danger. So this is going to change the background of our app and make it red. So there we go, all our rows are red. But now we want to make these rows uh, appear based on the condition. So this is true, this is false. So we come back here and we do PHP and we use a if statement and we say if data LTS. LTS. Now, where am I getting these data LTS from? Now, data LTS from is what with the variable that we are using to capture our fields. So, if you come here, you notice I have the name and I have the uh, LTS. So, the LTS is the name of the field. So, every field you want to capture in a list page, we use the data variable to get it. So, now we check if that data variable is equals to true. If this data variable is equal to true, then what do we do? So we open this, so we close this. But now this is not really closing because if you see here, we have this uh, opening brace, but we have not really closed it. So if you try and run it like this, you'll notice that we're going to be having an error, which is saying unexpected error of file. The unexpected error of file basically means that we have not really closed it. Now, how people do it is you come here and do a PHP, close it. So this this has been closed, yes, but it's wrong. So if you come here and check this, you also notice that we will be having an expected data file because we have not put a space here. So if you don't put a space here, this basically means that this is part of this PHP. So you have to put a space in there so that we can have this code being closed. So that would be the end of that code. So now as you can see we have this uh, displaying where we have true. But every true is set to suck to green. So come here and say success. So this is going to change the color of this row to green. All right. Now we're going somewhere now. So we need to change this. Just copy this and paste it again. And we need to also change this if it's set to false. So if this is set to false, we want to change the background from green to red we can always use danger there and if we come back here you will notice that now we'll be having green and red whenever i said false whenever i said true now we want to display this data in our graph so let's go and build a graph so let's just create a new section make this a container so that it flexes all the way to the end of the screen and we need to just uh, make this column d can have a column D6. Column D6, something like that. Great, now let's go ahead and drag our bar chart. So if we come here, you go to where we have our data set here and you want to open up our data source. Let's build a query. We'll be building this from the table we have been working with. And maybe we can just display these uh, details here. So just say OK and preview this. Alright, so if you come here, you notice that now we have our data being displayed like this. But this is not the right way to display it because it's using our ID to display. So if this is ID 1, it's going to be smaller. ID2 is going to also be smaller. So what do I mean? If you look at this from this end, you notice that they're using ID1. So the ID1 is smaller, two, three, going all the way up like that. So if you come here, you'll notice that that's the same case, FG, FGH, because the IDs are different. Now, what you want to do is to alter that. So you can use account and group by. 
So if you come here, you go to a query builder, choose at the table, and if you come here, you can just get rid of these. So we are left with the name, the LTS. Okay. So you can count using the name. If you come here and do count using the name. Now, as you can see, now the name has been counted five times because if you count these one, two, three, four, five, so that's what it's doing. It's getting the total records of the data that is inside other name. All right, so you can go ahead and also do another count. So get rid of the count. So you can say group by uh, LTS. So if you come here, you notice that we are grouping by two things. So group by basically means if you have three conditions, let's say we have true, false, and pending. All those records will be grouped based on that. Now, if you display it in a graph, let's try and display it in a graph. You'll be having something like this, of which is not really showing well because we don't really have the data sets. You'll be having something similar like that. So what do I mean? If you look at FJ here and FG, let's look FG is true, FHJ is false. You see, we have false. So we have two different conditions which are false. And that's why as you can see, those two details are being grouped by FJ and FG because two of them are opposing false and true at the same time. So let's go back. Let's look at something else. So uh, go to Query Builder, let's go back to our page and let's add it. Now, what we want to do is to look at where conditions. Now the where conditions go work like this. You do an LTS, something like that. So we are using the LTS field to do our, to our uh, where condition. So this is basically like filtering. So we have true and false. Now the value is going to be true. So I'm going to show you why this is not going to work. If you come here, you notice that we have no record because right about here, we have not really closed it inside uh, uh, these tags. So if you do that, we have that. Now you come back to our page designer and whenever you're adding a value, you have to first put the speech marks in there. And then let's say true. Great. So we have this for true and uh, true. And let's say false. There you go. You have all these records for false. Now, let's look at the comparators. Now, the comparators is basically means greater than, smaller than. So, this greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. You use them whenever you are trying to make uh, various. Maybe you're checking for price, stuff like that. Not like this when you want to do some, some similar looking uh, various. But now, let's look at not equal to. So, uh, the not equal to is going to give us uh, a true because what you're doing is you're checking if the variable was equal to false but now we want to check if this is not equal to false so you're going to be getting true now if you check this inside uh, our, our project we can try and see what we get all right so let's check where the problem is Okay, normally I don't really prefer using this, but uh, let's see. All right, so there we go. Uh, let's see this. So this is true, and this is also true because if we go back and check, so you have this FHJ which is true. Great. So you notice that we're not really getting any records here. So let's go back. And do another query builder. Go to choose. Add it and uh, capture the name here okay so there was somebody calling out there so I had to pause the video
All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our page. So we want to count the name with the LDS. So let's go do a count maybe. And let's do it group by true or false. Great, so there we go. Now, uh, let's see how we have it looking like in our project. So there we go. So you notice that now we are getting an actual count of the data because false is more than true. So if we come here, you notice we have one, two, three, and we have two true. So let's try and add another true and maybe let's say true submit. Let's go back to our page. And as you can see, both of them are already correctly aligned. So we grouped by uh, status and then we also do a, did a count of the names. So that's why we're getting these details. So now if you're working on a huge project, it's basically the same idea you have to put into consideration when you're working with it. So I guess that was a, uh, uh, the best I could do for this uh, section of Patriot. And also you notice that this is the same thing you do when you're working with uh, RAD systems. It's generally the same thing. So see you in the next one, guys.